So hi everyone, today I will be giving you some information on requirement gathering technique part 2 which is questionnaires and surveys. So in part 1 I would have explained about the interview technique and if you haven't got to see that video you can click on the link given in the description box. So let us get into what are questionnaires and surveys. So according to Borgides, a questionnaire is a list of questions sent to a number of persons for their answers and which obtains standardized results that can be tabulated and treated statistically. So it's not just jotting down a list of questions and then sending out to your audience and then getting back the answers. The main beauty of a questionnaire is that the results that you get, they are very standardized, they are formatted, they are structured and you can tabulate them and you can also treat them statistically for further analysis. So that's the real beauty of using a questionnaire. The second one is that it's a fairly good tool when you want to target a large audience of different diversities, scattered groups, you can use this type of a technique. Because when comparing it to interviews, you basically you in interviews you have to interview maybe a group of people or a, you know a single person. When compared to the number of people that you're targeting in questionnaires, interviews are very less. So that's what a questionnaire allows you to target a large number of audience of different diversity. And another point to keep in mind is when you're drafting or designing a questionnaire, you need to be very careful. It's not just you jot down a list of questions and send it out. The questions that you ask, it should be really relevant, you know, and it should actually be it should collect the essential information that you want for your inquiry. It shouldn't be something out of the box. It shouldn't be unwanted questions. All this should be, uh, uh, you know, omitted. And also avoid questions with difficulty, ambiguity and vagueness. Actually, the drawback of using a questionnaire is that when comparing to interviews where you ask detailed questions to the respondents, questionnaires tend to serve, the questions tend to surface only at the abstract level. It doesn't go into the specifics and details. So at the max, try to avoid vague questions. Try to ask a little bit detailed questions. So that's a point to keep in mind. And here are some tips when you're designing a questionnaire for a survey. So the first one is the size of the questionnaire should be small. The ideal questionnaire consists of 15 to 20 questions. But if your question is going to be more than 20 questions, then try to split it up into different parts or different sections. And you can either send it out in you know regular intervals or you can send it out at one stretch. It depends on you, but try not to overload the respondents with too many questions. The next one is the question should be clear, easy, brief, unambiguous, non-offending, courteous in tone and corroborated. So here this is nothing but maybe in your previous interviews or background knowledge you would have had some you know information. For that information you want to get it clarified again. So therefore you confirm that that information is right or you support certain concepts or certain statements. So that is called as corroborative. It should be corroborative in nature and also it has to be to the point. So also keep in mind the question should be non-offending and courteous in tone. Don't sound very rude also. The next one is the question should be arranged in a logical sequence. So definitely you're going to ask questions related to some topics. So always try to sequence them logically so that even when the pe people answering your questions, they also have a logical mindset of answering those questions. Do not jumble up your questions. The next one is vague words like good, bad, efficient, sufficient, etc, etc, etc. They should be avoided because according to me, my um, you know uh, persp perspective of good will be different. Your perspective of good will be different. So therefore, um, always try to avoid using these type of words. Try to use more specific words that's related to the concept or whatever um, you know scenario that you're trying to get information about the next one the use of words having double meaning this also has to be avoided so take for example words like price asset capital income etc so now price it can be any price if you just mention price it, the respondents might have a confusion of what price because there is sales price there's there is a you know wholesale price there's going to be purchase price Price can be any of different types, so don't use words and you know verbiages that have double meaning. 
Similarly, for assets also, assets can be any asset. You can take with any anything you take is an asset. So, what particular asset you mean? Whether it's going to be of uh, you know um, financial asset or it's going to be some fixed asset, it can be anything. So, therefore, try to be more specific in your questions. The next one is questions should not be tedious, nor should they tax the respondent's memory. They should be easy to understand. So first one question should be easy to understand. Respondents, they should not spend a lot of time trying to even understand your question. So avoid that. The next one is it should not be tedious and it shouldn't tax the respondent's mind. So a question that you ask them, they should be actually easy. It should, it should be easy for them to answer. It shouldn't be too much of, you know, they themselves have to do a lot of research. They have to sit and think and think for hours. So avoid those type of a questions in your questionnaires let it be more easier for the respondents the next one is questions of personal and sensitive nature they should not be asked so generally people who are on data analytics side and if you want to do a research and you collect want to collect uh, you know um, responses from different audience for example people who have certain type of addictions they might not be very comfortable answering to certain questions in a questionnaire so therefore you should always avoid asking personal and sensitive questions so if at all you're going to you there is a need to ask such type of questions then definitely you need to be more tactful in how you frame those questions so that it doesn't you know provoke or uh, you know um, hurt the respondents the next one is use the right type of questions for the right scenario so there are different types of questions that you can ask one question is going to be open-ended questions Oh, there are question types called as decatomous questions, which are actually um, questions that the, um, you have two alternatives, yes or no, right or wrong. So, all, so questions that clearly have two alternatives, these are called as decatomous questions. So rather than giving it as open-ended questions, you can get it as yes or no questions, right or wrong questions. And also you can even ask multiple choice questions where scenarios that you yourself want to provide answers and suggestions to the respondents you can use multiple choice questions etc so these are de depending on the question the scenario you can use these type of a questions next one is avoid misleading questions so um, leading questions are nothing but um, say for example i'm asking you um, about my video was my video informative okay take the word informative now when I ask you that question, it's, it's that, that I'm making you to think in the terms of whether the video is only informative. Now, sometimes my video may not be informative, but it might be, um, you know, very interesting. So therefore, if you ask just, if I'm going to ask you if my video is in, informative, you would say no. But then I'm missing out on the answer that my video is going to be interesting. So at certain scenarios, try to avoid leading questions because you need to get the other ideas about the respondents. So that is called as leading questions. The next one is use cross checks. So cross checks are nothing but cross question, um, you know, um, cross verifying questions. So therefore, if in the interview, my um, uh, the customer would have said that they wanted an online payment feature. And if you really want to cross check whether they really need it, then you can even ask it again. So that is you can use cross question um, in your questionnaire and also if you know the in the first or second question you want to cross verify again then you can ask it somewhere in the further question list you can cross verify your questions in your questionnaire itself. The next one is pre-testing now this is very important once you create your questionnaire just don't send it out immediately always test it out with a smaller audience get their feedbacks if at all there are any shortcomings in the questionnaire things need to be changed certain terms need to be changed or certain questions seem to be irrelevant or if you have missed out certain questions you would get these feedbacks so always test it with a small audience get feedbacks refine it and then you can move on with your larger audience and the last one is add a covering letter so always when you send out a questionnaire, it's very professional to add a covering letter. So when you add a covering letter, you need to mention what the questionnaire is about and what is the purpose of taking this particular survey and what are all the different terms used in the questionnaire, what are all the definitions, if there are going to be any calculations, mentioned calculations, unit measures, metrics, etc. Then also get the 
uh, uh, specify if there are any confidential information or for what purpose your questionnaire is going to be used in that way the audience also will know okay this information that they are providing is going to be used for this particular purpose and um, that's something that you can include and also if there are any other important information that you want to specify and let your audience know you can also specify that in your cover letter so these are certain important points you should keep in mind when framing a questionnaire and also sending out a questionnaire to your respondents and audience so do keep this in mind i hope this video was a little informative to you so if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe to this channel and also do share your feedbacks thank you